Increased passenger traffic and global capacity constraints are driving airport IT spending. How do you see the changing role of IT in managing airport operations? Civil aviation is one important uh, industry sector which is growing exponentially day by day, globally and especially in India. If you see, just before the COVID, the traffic was almost growing double digit. In fact, uh, if you see our Hyderabad airport, for example, as a case study, we were uh, doing uh, more than 15% CAGR every year. So we were uh, handling around 10 million traffic in 2016. And come 2019, we were handling 22 million. So within a span of four to five years, the traffic has doubled. Now that will give you a picture of what is the pressure the growth is putting on the industry. Now, if you see in the civil aviation segment, if you see, airports are one which are very capital intensive. So you cannot create capacities overnight, right? It, is, it involves a lot of capital investment, it involves a lot of infrastructure, it involves a lot of clearances, regulatory clearances, environment clearances, etc. So overnight you cannot do it. So a typical example in, uh, for example, if you see Hyderabad airport, from 2011 to 15, 16, we were growing only 7%, 8%. It could be so many reasons, macroeconomic reasons, the regional re reasons, it could be the Andhra, Telangana uh, issues, stable governments, whatever, whatever may be the macroeconomic factors, the growth was very less. So when we developed Hyderabad airport, the terminal was developed for a capacity of 12 million. So, and as per our estimates that time, around 2011-12, we should have touched 12 million. But we were hardly doing 7 million, 8 million during that time. As I said, 2016, we did the 10 million thing. So we had a lot of uh, capacity and uh, this thing. But suddenly, once Telangana state formed, economy started looking, stable governments in both center and in the state, very proactive investment policies by the state government, suddenly the traffic started increasing. So what we did, we sweated out the asset, even though it was built for 12 million. We did an analysis where are the choke points? Where are the capacity constraints? Because when I say 12 million, doesn't mean that entire terminal will handle only 12 million. It is a peak hour uh, handling capacity of the terminal. There could be a problem in the check-in facility. There could be problem in the security. There could be problems in the baggage handling. There could be problem on the air side. So what we did is, we had two views. One is the entire capital asset, what we created, that is the terminal, what we had, it has to be sweated out. Sweated out in the sense, we have to extract maximum capacity out of that, number one. Number two, where are the choke points? And how can we use technology to mitigate those choke points, that constraints? So that is where using a combination of technology, it, when I say technology, just need not be digital technology, right? It would be construction technologies as well, right? So we were successful in handling a 22, from a 12 million terminal, we extracted a capacity of 22 million without compromising on the service quality. As airports transition to a data-driven infrastructure, how can they build the capability of proactively dealing with peak operational periods and disruptions? This is where I think uh, the new age technology, especially with the advent of 5G and all, okay, and cloud technologies, and the ability to do data crunching and data analytics. The importance of data has increased. Various, whichever industry, it may be aviation industry, it could be any other industry. And typically aviation industry, as I said, no, airports were always uh, a, a, a player who used to give real estate to airlines and uh, ground handlers and customs and immigration. They never start, started thinking that they, there is a lot of data which they are generating intentionally, unintentionally, right? Now, how do we ensure that whatever data is being generated, right, is organized, is stored, is retrieved, is analyzed, and then this analysis is used for the betterment of the process efficiencies or customer experience. This is what this thing. Today, typically in any airport, like suppose if you take exam, again, I give the example of Hyderabad airport, typically in a, in a, in a year, you are seeing around 25 million eyeballs, right? Departure, arrival. And all of these people are basically well to do, decision making, influencers, millennials. So, with social media advent, they can do so many things. So, you can communicate so many things through them, right? 
and another paradox in an aviation especially from an airport perspective is some of this data is not owned by me like today you travel you go by indigo so the indigo owns your data hardly i will know any data about uh, about that particular individual so this is where how in a multi stakeholder system when data components are being generated by different parties how can we integrate it how can we bring in that single source of truth because biggest problem with data organization is you create multiple sets of the same data data mm-hmm. may not be the quality of data is questionable the the ver- veracity of the data is questionable and if you don't deal with proper data it is like a junk right so imagine a multi stakeholder environment where data is being generated how this entire ecosystem can use that data as a single source of truth and also keeping into account the privacy related issues right how can we use this for a better experience better process efficiency better operational efficiency that is where working and unfortunately the the current airport it systems are all archaic legacy systems so they don't take about cognizance of web 2.0 web 3.0 the advent of new technology like ai and ml and all those things deep learning blockchain so iot so that is where we are trying to see how we can create a new aviation stack using the new technologies wherein the all the other partners also feel secure like today an airline should not feel that its data is being shared to an airport or similarly customs should not feel that the, the data what they have is being uh, used by someone else without their knowledge so we are trying to see how we can create a new age airport ecosystem it uh, stack wherein the the privacy related issues will be there the data will be properly organized the components of data which has to be communicated with from from one stakeholder to the other stakeholder will be there for simple example is today if the airport knows how many passengers will be going in the next hour or next day or two days down the line the readiness for that be it in terms of security personnel deployment be it in terms of uh, making available of the infrastructure be it in terms of ensuring that adequate uh, uh, support services are uh, mobilized well in advance that can be done today because every airline as tickets are getting booked they know how many for a particular day x hyderabad how many tickets are booked to various destinations but that data is not shared with the airport that data is not shared with the security personnel that data is not shared with the customs we will come to know only one hour before that to uh, how many people are going so imagine we use a blockchain sort of a configuration for example the moment a ticket is booked on indigo x hyderabad airport will come to know that there is one person which will be who will be traveling on 24th this customs fellows will come to know at the end of every day you will know every day how many passengers will be going right i am talking about anonymous data i am not asking for the personal data of this thing right so that will help in operational we are also now seeing how we can create a uh, it architecture wherein the information flow from one stakeholder to the other stakeholder uh, whatever is required can be done in a seamless way so that the better uh, facilities better services better operational requirements can be achieved so it's a big thing so we are trying to look at differently how we can move away from the legacy uh, airport it systems and create an infrastructure open architecture wherein any stakeholder will have access to the information which is required by him without uh, getting into the privacy related issues with an ultimate objective of ensuring enhanced experience owing to the increasing importance of cyber security airports are investing heavily in building a solid security foundation how challenging is it to secure the expanding threat landscape especially after transition to cloud with data volumes of data increasing with uh, data being residing in uh, servers outside your own this thing in private clouds uh, some at on prem some in the cloud and all those things very very important that the the threats of uh, uh, hacking and uh, uh, phishing and other things we should be very very important and this is uh, airport's data is like a national data is very important so that is where a lot of uh, focus uh, has been built on how do we improve the cyber security the architecture and all those things in fact we have in in gmr we have a separate cyber security wing which continuously uh, looks into what are the advancements of the one is the uh, 
uh, hardware and the software architectures of cyber security second is the awareness for the users so today what happens why you get a threat uh, of cyber security is unknowingly innocently people will allow the hacker to get into your this thing so what we are doing is a multi pronged strategy one creating new systems new architecture so that the from a cyber security that is one thing which is going on second is creating awareness among all the users especially when you are in a, when you, when you are in a sort of a cloud sort of a thing and many many people both uh, uh, different stakeholders entering into your network so very very important what is the sort of protocol what is the sort of uh, 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 etiquette uh, people should have when they are connecting so that is another thing what we are doing third thing is we are now creating a center of excellence for cyber security so that it not only for uh, gmr airports but as a whole for the uh, aviation industry it this thing so these are the multi pronged uh, strategy which we are looking and as you rightly said cyber security is non negotiable whether it is airports airlines or whatever it is any now it is the it is the basic necessary requirement it is a basic building block of any it architecture how do you keep up the they keep uh, take into account the uh, full proof uh, cyber security sort of a thing and we are uh, totally aware of that and i and uh, i can tell you with lot of pride that uh, Uh, we uh, very minimal number of uh, uh, cases in fact i think there is nil cases where we had any issues of cyber security phishing and all those things how do you see airport management methodology evolving in the near future with new technology adoption what is the future road map for your company if it has to be sustainable like when i say that longevity of an organization the organization should be young not in terms of age but by the types of uh, uh, dna it, it it displays so in young, young organization means it should be always be flexible it should be agile it should take note of what are the advancements which are happening around how do you stay ahead of the curve how decision making is much more faster how do you have access to the data how do you empower people to think in a different way how do you bring in the culture of entrepreneurship so this is where we are thinking like gmr is an organization uh, it doesn't believe it is a owner of infrastructure assets we are an organization who owns human resources who display a particular attribute and display a particular type of leadership so we have the seven values and belief systems where humility always keep learning delivering the promise collective responsibility right agility these are some of the values so what we do is in fact every leader in gmr we spend almost 60 to 70% of our time in ensuring the human resources are uh, capable of delivering things so increasing their skills domain knowledge increase uh, enhancing their personality enhancing their leadership skills the ability to take decision making so this is where we are focusing so we strongly believe that if you invest in human resources that is when your organization will stay long and relevant it's not just because you created few assets infrastructure assets are created this thing that is number one aspect second thing is we are not a digital or a tech company but we want to think like a tech company today you might be seeing all around no a lot of accelerators many everyone tons and thousands of startups huge investments in the startup i don't know how these valuations uh, really uh, make sense right so uh, suddenly small startups becoming unicorns and all those things right but where is the challenge for this uh, the, for the startups or for this new age uh, entities is getting access to a corporate where they can deploy meaningfully their solution their ideas so hand holding by a end user is required right so that is where the struggle is and that is where these accelerators and all what they say that i'll have some corporate members you come i will do some idea thon and you develop a poc or something like that this is what is happening now that is where what we thought is someone like a gmr who is a corporate entity who has the ability to use all these technologies we should be in the forefront it is not a tech company who should be in the forefront anyone can do coding right i can suppose you want to do something in metaverse i can bring some people and uh, i can ask them to do this but how to apply a metaverse into a real world which makes perfect sense 
which which enhances experience see now today if you talk about metaverse and all all fictitious games uh, uh, some uh, fictitious real estate something they are doing it is only demonstration of technology but how do we use this technology capability in in real life situations which will make a difference to the people that is where entities like gmr will become more relevant so that is the reason what we have done is always innovation we used to think tech companies should lead no the new age is the companies which can use technology should lead it right the entire ip is how you can use the technology coding is not the ip so that is where we have created this innovix which is an innovation platform we brought in the best brains from the innovation uh, 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 world like uh, mr rama ayer uh, who is our director of innovation he is a well known name in the indian startup ecosystem innovation and all this thing we have few other people and we have created a open innovation platform so that the startups can access us the academic research institutions can access us the accelerators can access us and we will be in the forefront in developing new products new ideas new solutions which will be useful for the industry Thank you.